Now I get a lot of comments and a lot of personal messages asking me very commonly the same questions. So I'll try to address a lot of them in this video. People are wondering about my technical aptitude or I used to be an auto mechanic or where I worked or how I know so much stuff. Well that's the funny thing. I have a high school education and a college education as a machinist. But my only education as a mechanic is two and a half years in high school. Grade nine and a half a year, 10 and 11. I had the best mechanics teacher I've ever met. His name was Tillman Steckner. He even wrote the textbooks for all of Ontario's auto mechanics classes, you know, for high school. Oh, I always end up getting a random kitty, don't I? How's it going, mommy? You got four nice babies. Anyways, back to business. When I turned about 14, as you can see me in that picture, that's when my technical mind really turned on and that was the same time I went to high school. I loved high school just because they had all the shop classes. Welding, woodwork, uh, sheet metal, electrical, electronics, uh, auto class, machine shop. It was perfect for me. I signed up for every class, but I liked auto mechanics, machine shop, welding, and electrical the best. At this point in time in my life, I was working on mini bikes and lawnmowers and stuff like that I garbage picked, and of course televisions and electronics. I had a natural talent for that. I took no formal education after high school whatsoever in anything but being a machinist. I just was the type of guy who could figure things out. I was challenged. I wanted to take on any job someone would offer me, even if I never did it before, but I pretend I was an expert. But I rarely failed. I was pretty much always successful. I wouldn't give up. I got my driver's license when I was 17, not 16, which was allowed. I got my first car when I was 18. That's when I got my first job. And here's a picture of it in its stages of completion. It looked in great condition when I bought it, a 73 Cadillac Sedan DeVille with a 472 big block V8, carbureted. It was working perfectly. I bought it for, I think, $2,500 from an old couple, had 60,000 miles on it, and bits of rust and scratches, but not bad. There's another view as I was sanding it and priming it and preparing it for paint when I was 18. Too bad I don't have any more pictures when it was completed. But I drove that car for one year till I was 19, and then the headlines read in 1981 or something like that, that gasoline within one year or two years could be a dollar a gallon. That's a Canadian gallon, you know, 4.54 liters. I was shocked. You know, when I was driving my great big Cadillac to work and showing off and everything, <laughs> I was loving it. But gas was only like about 72 cents a gallon. When I was growing up, it was 33 cents a Canadian gallon or imperial gallon. So I got scared being the cheap bastard that I am. And I said to myself, well, if gas ever goes to a dollar a gallon, who's going to buy a Cadillac with a motor like that? I better sell it now before the rumors get all around and everybody decides to start buying little cars. So I sold it. I think I made a profit. I think I sold it for $3,200 because it looked so nice after I fixed it up. I bought a Chevette off my dad that was one year old four-door hatchback five-speed. It's the one he taught me to drive on, standard. I love standard now and I prefer it. I've been driving standard ever since. But I certainly didn't like my dad making me learn on a standard the very first day. But for you Europeans, of course, that's no big deal. But since we had an automatic car, a 78 Malibu at that time, I would have preferred to learn on it. Well, after becoming a machinist, getting enough money to put a down payment on my home, where I'm still living, right kitty? I quit my machinist job, became a full-time garbage picker and a backyard repairman. Learned everything else since then in this garage that's in my backyard or working on my farm. So I may have some interesting ways of fixing things and they're very good ways usually. The reason being I had no one to set an example for me, no one to watch, no one to ask questions to. I worked alone. 
So I just figured things out. And I think a lot of the ways I figured out how to fix cars and stuff were actually better than the official way. I didn't need to buy expensive tools to press ball joints in or to separate things or to compress things or stuff like that. I figured out a way to do it with just whatever junk I had laying around here. I had the most basic tools. A hand drill, a hand grinder, a bench grinder, a acetylene welder, and an arc welder. And it wasn't until years later that I got a MIG welder. Yeah, and I did buy a tire machine because I would garbage pick so many great tires and I was putting them on my own cars and selling them to people too. But really, I don't have very much tools. I just have one small box and then one box that has half-inch drive tools. This is it. That's all the tools that I use to fix the cars at the farm, the cars in my shop, for the last 25 years, except for my half-inch drive set, a couple hammers, and a couple homemade tools I welded up myself just for doing springs and stuff. Big deal. And there's my old tire machine I have at home, and my 25-year-old MIG welder. Other than that, your basic air tools, a few pry bars, not much more. But I get the job done. There's no big rolling chest of tools or st other people proudly boast in their shops. Nope. That's it. That's the same box of tools I use every evening when I go on my service calls and fix people's appliances, furnace, central air. Oh yeah, and I do have some refrigeration tools, but much of those are homemade too, like even my recycler. It really did benefit to have a machinist's education. We learned a lot of mathematics, machine shop theory, technical theory, uh, calculations for all different kinds of processes, and especially metallurgy and manufacturing technique. When you understand how something's made and why certain metals are chosen, how they're alloyed and what the properties of metals are and all these other things about metals, it really, really helps you in a business like mine where it's so diversified where one day I'm fixing or one minute I could be fixing a car, the next minute a lawnmower, the next minute welding something and then someone dropping off a TV to get fixed. So I'll guess the TV has nothing to do with the machine shop stuff but my business over the years has been very varied. I was so hoping as my son was growing up, my son Adam, who's 21 now, that he would have inherited the techni technical inc inclination that I have, but he didn't. He sort of has his mother's brain. He's not even interested in driving cars and he doesn't have his license still to this day. To me, that was all and most important. So although he helped me a lot in the shop, it was mostly just with air conditioners and dehumidifiers because they were bench jobs. No interest in whatsoever did he have in helping me with cars and getting all greasy and stuff. So it's unfortunate I couldn't pass down all my knowledge to my at least direct family. But anyways, I feel kind of proud that I'm here on YouTube and a lot of people are benefiting from this. And it gives me something to do in my retirement year other than, other than having fun at the farm. So I thank you all for supporting me. There's lots of people out there talking bullshit, but there ain't nothing going on bad. And I just hope everybody just leaves me alone. I'm not bothering anybody. I don't communicate with anybody on YouTube or behind the scenes in a bad way. I just want to get on, live life, let everyone be happy. Cool.